Okay, we're talking today arithmetic sequences and series, just somewhat of continuation, more focus on the arithmetic than the geometric. But let's talk about some things we want to have in our notes so we can get these things down. Um, figure out problems with these. If you're given some terms of an arithmetic, sorry about the spacing, if you're given some terms on the of an arithmetic sequence, you can write the equation for the nth term. So in other words, you can write the general equation that allows you to find any term that you want in that particular uh, sequence. Um, so let's look here. Write an example, or I'm sorry, write the equation for the nth term of this arithmetic sequence. So we got here, 5, negative 13, negative 31. So Step one, find the common difference. So step one, we're going to find the common difference. So what's the difference between these two? Excuse me. <clears throat> Got minus 18. Difference between these two, minus 18. So D is equal to negative 18. All right. So now that we've done that, we will use our formula. Our formula of A sub N, A sub 1 plus d times the quantity of n minus 1, and fill in the information that we have. So let's fill in. We have the first term, 5. We found our common difference, which is negative 18. Oops, sorry. And we want to multiply that, well, n minus 1. So let's figure some things out here. 5 minus 18n plus 18. So as we do this, a sub n will equal negative 18n plus 23. So the, what we just found is the formula. This one right here describes this sequence. So if you want to know anything down the road, whatever you want to do, instead of having to subtract 18 all the time, you want to find the next term 80 spaces down, there we use our formula. Okay, next example. All right, the next one we will write the equation for the nth term of the arithmetic sequence. So we're dealing with this one now, the equation for the nth term. So as we look at it, we got to figure out what's going on. So we've got Minus 9, minus 9. So our common difference equals negative 9. We're subtracting those. All right. A sub n, a sub 1, plus d times the quantity of n minus 1. Our arithmetic formula. So let's plug in what we know. A sub n we do not know yet. We know the first term is 12. Got a negative 9. There's a quantity of n minus 1, 12 minus 9n plus 9, a sub n equals negative 9n plus 21. So we have our answer there. Oh, let's see all that stuff.
okay, let's look how these examples might be a little bit different as we work through this. So now you're going to be asked to complete an arithmetic sequence. Now it's not the ending terms or find the general formula. You're going to be filling in the blanks, so to speak. So if you have two nine consecutive terms, like we have given here, you got three spaces in between them, there's two of them, they're nine consecutive, not right beside each other. The terms in between are called arith I'm sorry, arithmetic means. That's what this is. Arithmetic mean, arithmetic mean, and an arithmetic mean. So there's in this case, there's three arithmetic means. This hopefully you recall from the no re example that you guys worked on um, last week. So how do we do this? How do we apply it? What do we got to do? Good, good questions by all of you. Let's figure out what's going on. Okay, so in this problem, we got to find the arith. Uh, easy for me to say. We gotta find the arithmetic mean, or find the arithmetic means in this sequence. Negative eight, one, two, three, four, and then there's your fifth term. Five terms here. So that's a key ingredient. That means in order to get from here to here, we have to go five times our common difference. Again, one, two, three, four, but to get there, you have to go five. So five times to get the common difference. Um, another way or some things we want to look at here as we do this is one, two, three, four, five. That's your sixth term. So if you want to look at it this way, n minus one, 6 minus 1 equals 5. You can count it. You can do it that way. Again, your call, whatever whatever makes it easier for you to do. So let's look at our formula. Again, a sub n equals first term of the sequence plus common difference times the quantity of n minus 1. Okay? So talked about this. Here's how it all fits into play. Right now we've got an a sub n because we want to find what's in between these. So that's kind of where we're ending, so to speak, for now. So we have our 22. We got the first term in the sequence, negative 8, plus we don't know our common difference, d, but we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You can see where all this is coming into play now. 6 minus 1, now again, many of you could jump to this, if you miss a step or two, that's fine. 22 equals negative 8 plus 5D. All right, solve for D. Add 8 to both sides. 30 equals 5D. Our common difference in this particular arithmetic sequence is 6. So now use this to fill in the missing spots. So as we fill in the missing spots, our sequence or the missing arithmetic means are as follows. Take the 6 and add it. So we'll have a negative 2. We'll have a 4. We'll have a 10. And 16 will fill in the blanks for us. Should look somewhat familiar. We got the keyword arithmetic mean or key phrase arithmetic mean being used with that. All right, let's look at the next example, shall we? On this next one, again, worded a little bit different. Nothing crazy. There we go. Find the five arithmetic means between negative 18 
and 36. Oh, okay, if you want to write it out, go ahead and do so. We'll have negative 18. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 36, dot, 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 as our sequence goes. All right. Let's look at it, see what we're going to come up with. Our formula, a sub n, first term of the sequence, plus common difference times n minus 1. Well, we don't know the common difference, so I'm going to approach it this way. Instead of the counting, I'm just going to plug everything in. So i got a 36, negative 18, plus d, don't know it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, so, 36, negative 18, plus 6D, 6D equal to 54, D equals 9. So, as we're doing this problem, we're filling in D is equal to 9. So, find the next five arithmetic means in this. So, keep adding 9 to everything. Got a negative 9, got a 0, got a 9, got an 18, and got a 27. Notice how they're worded. Notice what we're doing, what we're plugging in to find our answers. Arithmetic series then is the next part of our topic today. And definition. It's going to be the sum of the terms of an arithmetic or I said series. I did say that. Some of the terms of an arithmetic sequence. So whatever that sequence is, we're adding them all up. The sum of the first n terms would be considered a partial sum. And we'll have some formulas to do this. Now, in some of these problems, sometimes you're going to have to find a sub 1, the first term. Sometimes you have to find a sub n. A or n needs to be found first. That's where this handy-dandy formula comes back into play for us. After we've done those things, then we're going to use the partial sum formula. So look what we got. Sum, there's n, there's your first term, there's your nth term, divided by 2. It's almost like you're kind of taking an average of it, if you will. So let's look at what we got here. If I can move my paper around. And see. So we want to find the sum of this sequence, 12. 19, 26, blah, 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 all the way up to 180. Okay, you can sit there and find the pattern and plug every number in and, and hit plus 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 and hit plus. Or, let's figure out what we need. A sub n, a sub 1, n needs to be found. So what formula would that bring us? Our formula of this. So what do we know? What can we plug in? So look, oops, let's look. Well, there's a sub 1. We got that. There's a sub n. I believe we can figure out d in this problem because plus 7, plus 7. So we know d. So let's plug in what we know. And this will help us find the Oops, get my paper straight. There we go. So we got 180 equals 12 plus 7 times the quantity of n minus 1. Plug it in what we know. Awesome. Do the work. 180. 12 plus 7n minus 7. Find some like terms here. 180 equals 5, 7n, 175, 7n. Finally, we get n equal to 25. That's not the sum, that's just what n is. So now we're going to plug this into our formula S sub n equals n, which we need, a sub 1, which we need and know, a sub n, which we need and know, and then that's divided by 2. So let's do so. 
So that's going to give us 25. And then that gives us 12 plus 180. All divided by 2. So we got 25 times 192 divided by 2. 25 times 96. So the sum of this series from 12, increasing 7 each time, all the way up to 180, is 2,400. Oops, can't write. Again, what is that? Taking all these numbers, add 7 each time, add it. So 12, 19, 26, blah, 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 all the way up 180, got them. Sum is going to be 2,400. Again, finding the sum of a series. All right, a little more practice. We've got this next one. So let's figure out what we have using a sub n, a sub 1 plus d, n minus 1. We've got to find n. So what do we got? 100, 2 plus 2 plus 2 times 2 times the quantity of 2n minus 1. As we're doing our work, uh, coincidentally, we got another 25 as we do this. Oh, can somebody find the typo? I sure do. Before we go, that should not be there. Makes that a 2. Makes that a 2. Our n should be 50. Be very careful. You don't make simple mistakes like I just did. So now let's take it in, plug the whole thing in. So we'll add S, S sub n equals 50. Our first term, 2. Our last term in this example, 100. All divided by 2. So that's going to give us 50 times 51. So our sum, 2,550. Sorry about the mistake there. Let's see if we can focus this a little bit. That didn't help. Okay. Back to normal. All right. Let's try another example. This next example we have. Maybe. There we go. Now we're going to find the first three terms in an arithmetic series in which a sub 1 is 7, a sub n is 79 and s sub n is 430. All right, so look what we're dealing with. We're trying to find things. So in order to complete our sequence, we got to figure out what d is. We got the first one. We know what d is. We can get the next three, unfortunately. From here to here, we don't know what number that is. So we're kind of working backwards with our formulas. And I'll go back to the other one. I skipped one. I'm sorry. Let's, let's work with this right now. <coughs> so as we're working backwards with our formulas, we know this. So let's kind of plug in some things. And we know so we can start working backwards. So we got 430. We don't know n. We know a sub 1. We know a sub n, so we can start working our magic in this, and that's going to give us 86 divided by 2. So 430 equals 43n. That gives us n equal to 10. So now what do we do with this? Well, if 
n is equal to 10, we can use this to help us find d. So now, back this way, so we're kind of going a little bit in reverse. If we attempted this one first, we didn't know d, we didn't know n, we had two variables in, in one problem. But now look what we have. We got 79 equals 7 plus, don't know d yet, but we have 10 minus 1. Nine D equals seventy-two. So D is equal to eight. So now we're going to take this eight and find the first three terms in this problem. So we start off with seven. Add eight, we got fifteen. Add eight, we got twenty-three. First three terms. Good. You know what? I'm going to let you guys, I'll change my mind here. I'm not going to go back to this one. I'm going to let you guys, and you can ask me in class, you guys figure out that example. n is equal to 16, a sub n equals 240, and d is equal to 8. you got to find the sum. So you do that one, and you can ask me in class on Monday or Wednesday, and see what you come up with. Here we found the first three terms, so it did a little bit different. Let's try another example in those regards. All right. Find the first three terms of the arithmetic sequence, S sub n, so the sum. n is equal to 8, ah, a little bit different, and A sub n equals 36. Well, we've got two formulas we're going to use. So based on our information, where do we have the least amount of variables when we plug stuff in? So we look at it. Got a sub. Got it. Good. Don't have it. Don't have it. Got it. So we got two out of the four. Got it. Good. Got it. Good. Don't have it. So we only have one variable open here because we also have this one. So there's our first course of action. 120 and is equal to 8. A sub 1, we don't have, so we'll just call it A right now, but we do have A sub N. Now, different people are going to approach this different ways in terms of solving this. Your call, I see some cross-reducing we can do, so it's going to give me 4 times A plus 36 equal to 120. All right. 4a plus 144 equals 120. Negative 24, 4a, a, negative 6. That is our what? First term. So we got that already. So we start with a negative 6. Then what? Well, we got to find the next one. Do we know what d is? Why? I don't think so as we look at this. So let's find D so we can see what we've got to do. So plug in what we know. We know A sub N. 36, first term. Yeah, we just got it, negative 6. Plus D times, we know N is 8 minus 1. So 36, negative 6 plus 7D. 7D equal to 42. D equals 6. So what are you going to do with that? You're going to take that and add it to each one of those. So negative 6 plus 6, 0, and then 6. There's your first three terms in this particular sequence. All right, last part for this lesson. It's called sigma notation. This is capital Greek letter sigma. So it's a notation. Sometimes you might see little bars on it there. But here's how it gets set up. So with sigma notation, our last value of our series will be placed on top. 
the first value or how it's going to start is going to be placed down here. This will be again capital sigma. Then you'll have your function that's going on here or the formula for the terms in the series. Formula for the terms in the series. So as we look, let's see our example here. I guess we can see that okay. So as we look at this problem, here's what the, all this stuff means. This problem means we're going to take 3 times 1 plus 1 plus 3 times 2 plus 1 plus 3 times 3 plus 1 and all the way up till our last one 3 times oops 10 plus 1 and we're summizing it we're adding it all together sigma notation summation so it would be a 4 that would be 7 that would be 10 dot 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 finally 31. So they can give you this information, we can find it, and then we can go back to using our formulas. Wanted to introduce the sigma notation to you. Um, remember, n is always one plus the series difference. One plus the series difference. So something to keep in mind as you're doing it.